The relationship between Max and Penelope, we just have chemistry, he and I. And Y'all have a lot of chemistry. I, <laughs> oh, I see any potential in the uh, entire cast. Nothing makes me pee with laughter more than uh, this man, Stephen, speaking Spanish. Dios mio! I'm gonna say I think they're important because the Latino community has not had these and it's important. So I'm gonna say it's important. You can be nice and modest. I'll be the Cuban who's not modest. Hi everyone, welcome to Around the Table. We are all at home, but on with uh, Entertainment Weekly. This is the cast and executive producers of One Day at a Time. I'm Gloria calderon Kellett. Mike? I'm Mike Royce. Norman? I'm uh, Norman Lear. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rita Moreno. <laughs> I will certify that that was Rita Moreno. <laughs> Justina Machado, and uh, this is uh, my daughter. I'm Isabella Gomez, and my little brother. Hi, I'm Marcel Ruiz, and my uncle. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is Todd Brunel, Uncle S. Snyder. We have our other executive producer. This is Brent Miller. Thank you, Justina. And uh, this is the guy who keeps trying to break into the house, <laughs> Pulaski. Life is too short. We're gonna have differences, but what does that matter? We're family. Hello. Hello. Things are finally starting to look up. Mike and I are, uh, we're very diligent showrunners in that we talk every day. That's more of, uh, that's more really about our own, um, deep need to uh, to be codependent. Uh, during the hiatus, we always talk, we always come in with a skeleton of where we think the season goes and, and several episode ideas. We usually come at each other with ideas. We usually will be like, I thought of this funny scene, like the, like the masturbation episode. Um, the what? <laughs> your favorite episode, Norman, whatever. <laughs> yeah, that was, um, I pitched the first, the opening image, the Penelope's at the therapy group and she says, when you have a teenage boy, you know, it's going to happen. One day a door is going to open and that whole thing. I just pitched that to Mike, but you know, oh, so you walked in on Alex. No, he walked in on me. That I pitched to Mike and then he was like, great. What's the story? You know, I mean, it, the, the discussion quickly got into the boundaries that don't exist in that house and uh, how it's, the story is is <laughs> really about how they're on top of each other, and that's the way that that family is. But in this case, boundaries need to be drawn. But they can't. They have you know they have an impossible time trying to figure out where the line is. Uh, but this felt like a very good, <laughs> a good line. <laughs> I remember the first time Gloria and Justina went up to me and like uh, we, it was just after a show. We finished filming a show, and people just hang around after our tapings. And we were just talking with my mom and my dad, just chilling there. And then they're like, oh, the next episode is about you catch uh, Penelope Nasri. I was like, oh, my God. And then my mom's there, too, and then everything. But at the same time, I was really excited because it's like something so different that, like, not only in, in this show we haven't tackled, but in any show. I've never seen an episode like that, especially, I mean, so real, because I put myself in Alex's position and I can't imagine the experience. For sure, it's one of my favorites. It was so much fun, and of course, you involved Lydia a lot in it. And uh, I, I really, I remember cracking up constantly at all the other actors because you know we do have a funny cast, They're very, a very talented cast. Very it's, talented. It's one of my favorites. Oh no! If you walked in on Alex. <laughs> He walked in on me. No! So that's, yeah, that's how we usually sit. He will say, oh my gosh, my son did this funny thing. Or, or what if Rita did this? Or what if Justina did this? Or what if, we, we just always will come in with funny things we think they might do. Or funny things we think they might have takes on. And then we'll talk about what the arc for each season looks like. Like I remember the year I, I came in. <laughs> Rita, you'll love this. The season I came in and said, I think we get, I think Rita has to have a stroke, right? Like that was, you know, and my, Mike's like, what? I'm like, well, not Rita, the, the, the character, <laughs> right? But like, that was that, that we sat down and it was building towards that. And like, we wanted to do a mod, something like mod and 
what does that look like? And could it be Penelope doing an entire episode just by herself with her mother? No, it would be lovely to see all the characters have a moment because we have these amazing theatrical actors and it would be amazing to see each of them have a shining moment, really create a monologue show. Mike, you talk, it's both of us. <laughs> you talk too. I, mean, I talk a lot. Is it's it? This is very fun. revealing. <laughs> I'm a typist, okay? That's it. I feel like, no, you've done a great job explaining. We all, you know, there's a room full of people who bring their experiences in there. Yeah. Sometimes, I mean, we all the actors came into the room as well and talked about stuff. And uh, sometimes we draw from, from their lives as well. So it's all about, you know, finding stories. And as far as the rest of the season, I mean, you know, we have a lot of personal things that have been set up between uh, Max and Penelope. Um, you know, we have a young woman trying to get into Yale, uh, who is, has a, who is a significant other that she needs to worry about. We have a young man who decided to dye his hair for some reason. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the back half of the season, I hope we get to do it as quickly as possible because there's some really, I don't want to, important sounds too self-important, but we get into some heavier stuff and, and, and we're really looking forward to getting those episodes out there as soon as possible. Mike is so lovely and so modest because I think they are important. They, I'm going to say I think they're important because the Latino <laughs> community has not had these and it's important. So I'm going to say it's important. You can be nice and modest. I'll be the Cuban who's not modest. I think they are important. We haven't gotten to see a family talk about a lot of these issues in this way. To hear the, the, an episode like the masturbation episode and hear each of them be so funny but be so in character and talk about a very real thing that many in our community are, are ashamed or unwilling to discuss. And they got to do it and they did so by being the most themselves they were. It was the funny, the more in character they were and speaking from the heart of their own characters, the more hilarious it was. There are real health benefits from self-gratification, particularly for women, like reduced stress and pain relief from menstrual cramps and improved cognition. Que tontería. <laughs> Sex is between people who are married. It is Adam and Eve, not Bzzz and Eve. <laughs> uh, the relationship between Max and Penelope, it's actually something that, uh, you know, he wasn't supposed to be around more than the time he came around, but the chemistry was so fantastic that we just had to bring him back. And um, I don't know why we have chemistry. Somebody asked me that the other day. You can't, you can't really explain chemistry. We just, mm -hmm. we just have chemistry, he and I. Uh, and Y'all have a lot of chemistry. I have a lot of chemistry. <laughs> yeah. It's all acting. It's all acting. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, but I mean, the relationship, I think it's a really refreshing relationship. It's a relationship that we don't, there's no pressure. You know, they both, they're both adults. They, they love each other. They're both very grounded in their lives and they want to be a part of each other's lives. They're just not ready to make that commitment. And it's still a really fabulous relationship. So it's another thing that One Day at a Time does so beautifully. Uh, you know, we talk about things that happen every single day and there's no judgment. You know, there's no judgment here. These two people just really love each other and we don't know what's gonna happen in the future. But right now they're gonna be together, but in, not in like a marriage kind of situation. No, never. Whoa. No, no. I'm sorry, Max. I am. I'm, the, the, the decorations, they're beautiful. The flowers, the candle, oh my God, the freaking moon, it's perfect. But I can't marry you. No, never, ever, like never. Uh, j j to clarify, the answer is no. <laughs> Cool. I'm wondering what Lydia's dating tips would be, you know, like uh, using a dating app or kind of some of the things we saw in that episode. Well, she may not want, she would not want, may not want to date anybody, but she has no compunction whatsoever about flirting with her daughter's boyfriend. She has no compunction. She's ruthless. That's something we discussed on the phone before the show even became a reality with, uh, we discussed with Norman. And, and the writers, I said, I want her to be a sexual woman. I know she's old and I know she's the grandma, but there's no reason that she, I, I, I don't want to be one of those fuss budget, in one of those fuss budget roles. And uh, to my delight, everybody said, yeah. I said, I want her to be sexual. I want her to be a flirt. And that's all I knew about this character that so far had no identity. But I love it that the writers took to that, and Norman loved that. Berto is my husband. Okay, and where is he? Uh, he passed away 10 years ago. And he is here. <laughs> oh. oh, well, where do you keep him? 
Alberto is in here and in here. And okay, we get it. We get it. We get it. Elena and Sid, I mean, Elena and Sid have been together for a really long time now. It's definitely their third season. So they're definitely getting into a little bit more of grown up troubles in that, for one, they're going off to college and they don't know where each of them is going. So they don't know if there's going to be distance. They don't know if they're going to stay together. We see them earlier in the season talking about they don't want to be those people. So they're going to split up. But of course, they love each other so much that they decide they're going to stay together. And then we find out that, yes, they admit they have celebrity crushes to each other, but Elena lets slip that she has a real-life crush and a real-life person that they both see all the time. So I am certain that the writers have set that up so that there is something coming. But I just, I don't, I don't know what exactly it is yet. <laughs> Come on, you've got some too. Okay, I guess... Emma Gonzalez and Janelle Monae and Tanya the barista. Who's Tanya? That super cute barista that works on the coffee shop in the corner. Oh, I thought we were doing celebrity crushes, not real people who work and or live in our neighborhoods. <laughs> Schneider's evolved a lot in the, over the course of the series, um, in good ways, in annoying ways, in funny ways, all the ways, but I think um, I think my favorite part of his evolution right now is just the season three to season four. It was so tumultuous in season three where he fell off the wagon and really hurt the family and really hurt Avery. And I think between season three and season four, he spent a lot of time doing some work on himself. And now in season four, we're starting to see some of the, the rewards of him growing and maintaining his sobriety in that you know, he's, Avery's moving in and we're having a baby and it's like all the, all of his dreams are starting to come true. So it's really fun to watch that and to have everybody else on that journey with him and be kind of like proud of him is kind of cool to see. So yeah, it'll be interesting when the baby comes. That's, it'll, it'll be a lot more growing up for him. If I wasn't already pregnant, I'd say, let's go make a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, can't wait to see our little schnabry. <laughs> schnabry. <laughs> <laughs> Do you love it? No, I hate it. Can we expect a proposal anytime soon from Schneider? I don't know. You know, I one of the things I love about this show is when when you think we're going to zig, we zag, you know? And it's kind of fun to... Uh, turn all these relationships on their heads and, and do something different and, and just be true to the characters. So I, I don't know. I, my, maybe Mike and Gloria and Brent and Norman know. I don't know. I think, you know, we have a baby together. So that's, I think, more glue to keep people together than uh, an actual marriage ceremony. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know. They might just play it as it lays, as they are. We, uh, we know everything. We're not saying nothing. Well, I guess there's only one thing left for me to do. Clean up after myself. I'll get the tape measure. <laughs> Let's head back downstairs. Why or how did Marla Kibbs come about our Halloween episode? So when we, when we saw that, uh, Gloria and Mike had, had written um, a, couple, uh, a couple characters to have great opportunity for some stunt casting. And, and how uh, incredible would it be to keep characters literally all in the family like a Marla Gibbs and and when we all discussed it it was let's let's see if she'd do it and it was as simple as asking her and of course she wanted to be involved and uh and it made sense to give her the 227 reference in our apartment building as if she's been living there all these years so we were uh we were thrilled to have her that is so sweet oh I love that <laughs> she was very I, just, I was so thrilled to meet her people don't realize how unsophisticated sometimes actors are. I'm thrilled to meet, I mean, I would give anything to have Andy Garcia in the show, or Ricky Martin for that matter. Nice. Ooh. Hi, we are here to talk about climate. Oh, my stars. What very clever and timely costumes. <laughs> Thank you. Dorothy and the tornado. <laughs> What happens in, in last week's episode is really crucial in the relationship between Lydia and Berkowitz. It's kind of a look behind the curtain. All we see is the delightful roasting of Berkowitz that Lydia always, you know, she tortures me uh, <laughs> constantly. Uh, but, but what we see is Berkowitz <laughs> in the episode 
offering a hand to her getting through a very difficult passage. Like, we're not <laughs> fools. I know that Berto is Lydia's great love of her life. I know that. And I know what it's like to lose love. And I think a great act of love is to help <laughs> Lydia get past this point where she was going to honor Berto with the burial he wanted to put his act. But of course, you know, that all changes because what is what is that old quote? It's like, you know, a man can't step into the same water twice because the river is not the same and it's not the same person. Uh, <laughs> but but I, I think helping her across that bridge with Berto shows what a kind of mature and loving relationship there really is between Berkowitz and Lydia, not just me getting kicked to the curb every time I get close to her. <laughs> There is nothing I would not do for you. Juntos, para siempre, mi amor. Um, what was it like to work with Ray Romano? Hate him. Um, <laughs> so it was amazing deja vu because he wasn't supposed to be at the taping. We were doing, you know, he was doing us an enormous favor. So we, he was going to come and shoot his scene without an audience, just because we were trying to get him in out as quickly as possible. and. Then he did us a big favor and came to the table read. And then he had such a oh, good yeah. time at the table read that he's like, yeah, maybe I should be at the taping. I don't know, you know. <laughs> and then he came to the taping and he he did everything that he did on Everybody Loves yeah. Raymond, he did for this episode, of for the one scene that he was in. He wrote all these alt jokes. You know, he loves doing alt jokes. So he came with his little, on his little clipboard, you probably hopefully can't see it if you zoom in, but he's got he's got all his alt jokes written. I actually love the fact that he didn't tell us what the alts were. I have to tell you, Mike and Gloria, that was really exciting. Not to know what was going to come out of Ray Romano's mouth was awesome. I like the Kardashian uh, line. We didn't know that was coming, which is why the response was so like, so like organic, you know, I was like, oh God, <laughs> and, you know, like them becoming president. So it was, that was a, a blast working with Ray Romano. I gotta go, I gotta go. So I'll see you all again in 10 years. Oh my kid, in 10 years, President Kardashian is gonna do away with all of this. Oh. <laughs> it's been a rough day, Brian. Sorry, I just, I have a lot of apartments to hit and uh, nobody likes the census guy. I still constantly watch the uh, reruns of yeah. this show. And uh, we were nervous. We were actually nervous. Very. And nobody could believe us. And I was like, oh, God, we're so nervous. Grace Romano's going to be, oh, my God, he's here. <gasps> oh, okay. my God. I have to add, too, to the Mike story of, like, Ray wanting to come to the taping. I was near him during the table read. We finished, and we had gotten a ton of laughs, obviously, that episode. And he kind of looked up and looked around and said something along the lines of, like, yeah, I missed this. And, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, this is the sweetest thing that's ever happened. And then, yeah, and then they were like, yeah, he's going to be at the taping. And I was like, I knew it. Yeah, he <laughs> loves it. Yeah. It was amazing. The scene just crackled because everybody was, it was just such a great showcase for everybody in the cast to like all the Alvarez's oversharing and then him just having to sit there and take it. And uh, it was, I just loved it so much. And I promise you, they will all be saying everybody loves Brian. <laughs> yeah, doesn't sound right. This season arc is getting Elena out, uh, is getting Elena off to college and Penelope and Lydia and the whole family getting ready for the baby and getting, you know, one is going and one is coming. And what does that look like for this family? What does it look like for the, you know, really, even though Penelope went to trade school, and went to, uh, you know, did an NP thing. She didn't do the traditional four-year college the way Elena is doing it. So that's a really big deal for this family. And I remember being the first one in my family to go to college and what that felt like and, and the pressures of that and the excitement of that and how the community just rallies together to get you to get their, you know, to get their young girl off. That is where we're heading. We, we shot six. So the sixth episode, obviously, the Supermoon episode is the sixth episode, which strangely works as a beautiful mid-season finale. And then we have the final seven written for this season that we can't wait until things are safe so that we can return and see the rest. We have so many beautiful episodes. Also, Justina is directing and Todd is directing again. Uh, a beautiful, so many amazing guest stars 
so many amazing, like really we're so excited about the rest of this season. And this season takes place uh, before the pandemic. So it'll be interesting because I think season five, uh, I'm just going to say it like it's happening, uh, yeah. I think would be in some sort of aftermath or some sort of pandemic and then aftermath. So uh, it, it's it's really interesting. I mean, we have a New Year's episode that I'm so excited about because I've been wanting to do a Cuban New Year's episode forever. And so that is that New Year's episode, I think is episode like nine. So that ends 2019 for them and starts them on uh, 2020. Yeah, I think if I can just add, because I, I don't want to be too coy with this, you know, we can say some things that were, we have a great episode about basically the Catholic Church and, you know, so LGBTQ issues. Um, we have an episode that deals with Dr. Berkowitz and Penelope's um, work relationship, which we haven't really ha focused on this so far this season, but there's something, um, you know, big happening there. And uh, we have a great road trip. Uh, episode that we're excited about and Penelope and Schneider of course horns his way onto the road trip in a very unique way and uh, they get to spend a lot of time together and uh, something very emotional for Lydia coming up near the end and um, in addition to the thing that we just saw um, and then college yeah it's just every episode is uh, I couldn't be more I mean we're just like can't wait to get, love get at it. We love <laughs> it this season came out the fastest of any Boom. season. You know, like I said, Mike and I come in with kind of a skeleton of ideas. And I would say we barely <laughs> touched on so many of the ideas that we wanted to hit. We had so many areas of things that we wanted to get to that just, we couldn't yet. So it just speaks to this family has many more stories left into it and many more seasons of, of beautiful uh, journeys that, that we want them to go on. <laughs> Happy, happy, happy. <laughs> We're done. Oh, I see Emmy potential in the uh, entire cast and in the in the writers. Gloria and, and uh, Mike have done a fabulous job leading a writing team to get into the subjects and the uh, essence of family life uh, to help us understand that. Uh, that uh, the, f the family life of uh, Cubans is uh, not unlike. Uh, it has another personality, but it's every bit as much it, the same as uh, all every other ethnic group. We are one, we humans of the species. I know, I, I love the <laughs> show and each of these performers could not be more gifted in my mind. Tonight, there is a super moon. You just take Nora's hand and look up and let the magic of the super moon do the rest. Actually, the super moon is just a regular moon that's in its closest position to the Earth's orbit, making the lunar disk look larger than usual. <laughs> this has been Entertainment Weekly's Around the Table with the One Day at a Time cast and executive producers. You can watch One Day at a Time on Pop TV and TV Land.